right, this video is going to be on the uh, adjustment, how to adjust a GM or Saginaw um, power steering box, uh, model 605, 800, etc. Um, used in uh, mainly in GM vehicles and um, also uh, I think Ford used them, International, Jeep, um, I think some of the newer Mopar stuff used them too, but um, <clears throat> I noticed uh, a lot of people adjust these boxes incorrectly. Um, anytime there is play in the box, everybody runs to this adjuster right here. Um, what you need to know is there are two adjustments on this box. Um, this one here adjusts the, uh, basically adjusts the preload of your pitman shaft down here. Adjusts the up and down play in it. Um, the one that nobody ever seems to bother to adjust or even pay attention to is this one right here. This is the, um, this adjusts the preload on your uh, input shaft or worm gear. The way to adjust it <clears throat> is to properly adjust it according to every factory service manual is to um, loosen this lock nut up and back it off usually till about the end of the threads loosen this this adjuster up and get the load off of your pitman shaft um, you're gonna go this is a uh, basically a flanged uh, flat flange lock nut um, <clears throat> how to loosen that see these notches in here you basically take a you know a big big punch and hammer it it's counterclockwise it's you know standard thread um, counterclockwise to loosen it and you remove it these two pins right here are for a spanner wrench what you do is you basically this needs to be torqued um, to 30 foot pounds um, once you could usually, I mean, once it's tight, it's tight. I mean, you could pretty much, if you've done any kind of work on anything, you can you can pretty much gauge 30 foot pounds. Um, what I did um, is I took a pair of long needle nose pliers, stuck them in there and used a bar to torque this down. Underneath this is a Torrington bearing. Um, and this basically adjusts your free play uh, or removes your play rather. Um, as these boxes wear, um, you know, tolerances, it only takes a couple of thousands to open everything up and, and create that slop. Um, adjusting just this, this is your over center preload. Um, adjusting this, all this does is remove the play, your up and down play in your pitman shaft. It doesn't correct the mesh between your worm gear and your pitman shaft, the, the teeth on the pitman shaft. Um, so you basically torque this down to roughly 30 foot pounds and you're going to take a mark make a mark on this where it meets the case use a use a sharpie a magic marker or anything and make a straight line from the case down onto this nut uh, the factory service manual states once this is torqued down to 30 foot pounds you're going to mark counterclockwise one half of an inch you're then going to loosen this until that mark that you initially made lines up with your mark a half inch back counterclockwise. Then you tight, put this nut back on, this flange nut, tighten it back down, you know, take a punch, hammer it till it's tight. Then you go to your, your preload, um, your over center preload that adjusts the play in your pitman shaft. Um, it's very sensitive. And what you're basically going to do is, um, according to the book, um, the drag on this, when this is adjusted correctly, um, is only 6 to 10 inch pounds. Uh, the only way to really do that accurately is with a beam style torque wrench, um, which I don't have. Um, but you can do it by basically adjusting the feel of it. You can take an 18, uh, a 6.18 millimeter socket slide it over this and it'll engage in this flat on this shaft um, move the shaft back and forth as you tighten this up the box has to be centered 
and the box has to be dry. So make sure all your, your fluid is out of it. I just got done putting a new input shaft seal and pitman seal on this thing, so it's completely empty. Um, you tighten this very, very slowly while moving this input shaft back and forth until you get that six to 10 inch pounds of drag required to turn this. You'll feel it if you tighten this too much because in the center here, once the box is centered, you'll feel it'll kind of bind up. Um, back this back off until, it, until that bind is gone. Then you're gonna go ahead and lock this down. This gets torqued to roughly 20 inch pounds. Um, this box is out of my 83 Trans Am, um, and I, you know, I pulled it to um, to replace the uh, input and pitman seals on it. Um, this box is the same basic style box that's on my 67 Chevelle. Um, like I said, it's used on every GM vehicle from the 60s all the way up through the 80s. You know, the same basic style, the same adjustment procedure applies to all of them, um, whether it's a Ford, anything. Um, you, as long as it's a Saginaw box, you know. But like I said, it's, uh, I've seen people do it and I'll admit, you know, when I was a teenager, I did it myself. I had a box with a little bit too much slop in it. Right away, I would go and crank this down until the play is gone. And over time, you'll, you'll notice, you know, especially if the car's driven a lot, it gets a lot of miles and whatnot, it will, over time, it'll loosen back up again. And the reason for that is because this was never touched. This, this play in here, um, this applies, you know, it basically removes all the play from the Torrington bearing that's underneath this um, and removes the play out of this shaft. You can tighten this down all you want. You're still going to have this in and out movement on this shaft. And if the box is on the ground, and that's how I knew when this was out that I needed to adjust it because once the box was out of the car, I laid it on the ground and you can turn this back and forth and you could see this this input shaft moving in and out ever so slightly. Um, now the box, I you know, I adjusted it, it's fine. All the play is out of it. Um, you know, and this is a 12.7 um, to one box. It's a WS6 box used in Trans Ams, um, third generation IROX, uh, Z28, etc. And I'm sure, a, you know, a slew of other cars. But, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's too easy to pull a box out of 99% of the vehicles out there and do it right. Um, otherwise you will be going back into it again. And you know, you can only tighten this so many times without touching this before the box is junk because those gears are, are, you know, it's obviously gear on gear and they're not, they're basically not meshing correctly. Um, you'll end up with, with metal in your, in your fluid. Um, it, it's just not the right way to do it. So like I said, pull the box out, do it right. Um, you know, I can, I can list the steps, uh, you know, to do it. And, um, it's, it's a really simple procedure. Like I said, once I had the box on the ground, um, it took me probably 15 minutes to do this. Um, and I removed quite a bit of slop from it. So, you know, like I said, don't, don't just go to this one. If you're going to do it, do it right. Um, you could save your box in the long run. And <clears throat> especially with reman boxes, for harder to find stuff like these 12.7 to one boxes, you go ahead and get a reman from the, the auto parts store. It could be a 16 to one, it could be a 14 to one, you know, and that's why I chose just to, to go through it and adjust it. But, um, you know, like I said, if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to leave a comment or something like that. I can, I can be a little bit clearer. Um, you know, it's, it's easier to be clearer and, and, something typed out than it is you know because like i said it's some stuff i'm sure slipped my mind and everything but you know like i said it's, it's a very easy thing to do you don't need any special tools really to do it um you know and like i said i, I removed every every speck of play out of this box um in, in probably 15 minutes um so like i said if you got any questions feel free to leave a comment um comment like subscribe and um that's it